Welcome to Flat Ride of the Week, episode 12. Today we'll be talking about one of my favorite rides both to ride and operate, the Tilt-A-Whirl slash Waltzer. As always, if we forget anything or say something that's incorrect, please politely correct us in the comment section below. Let's get started. Alright, so let's get started with the history. So the Tilt-A-Whirl started in Faribault, Minnesota by the Selner Manufacturing Company in 1926. The early Tilt-A-Whirl had wooden gondolas, a gas engines, and featured nine cars instead of the now common seven. Uh, the Tilt-A-Whirl really took off in the second half of the 1940s through the 1960s. Around this time, the modern version of the Tilt-A-Whirl was developed. Uh, and the modern Tilt-A-Whirl has steel or aluminum sort of overhanging uh, cars. Uh, and they, those fit up to four riders per car. Uh, each ride has seven cars with weighted, non-locking lap bars, uh, which is really awesome, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, the final modification to the Selner Tilt-A-Whirl came in 2003 when the company offered a new design car without the classic overhang and with headrests. Um, this design would be, ve be very popular with Larson, who would go on to create their own version of the Tilt-A-Whirl after Selner was sold to Larson in 2007, but we'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, so I have a lot to say about the Tilt-A-Whirl because it was, honestly, it's in Camp Snoopy in Cedar Point. Um, it opened as Tilt-A-Whirl in 1999, so it's a pretty new Tilt-A-Whirl from Selner, and um, it it is now named Linus's Beetlebugs as of 2019. And man, what a fun ride! Holy cow! This, if you've never, if you go to Cedar Point often and you've never ridden this, you are missing out both to ride and to operate. Such a fun ride! So whenever I was in camp, I would try and get stuck at this ride as much as possible because for whatever reason no one else liked it but this ride was so much fun uh one fun thing about it is because you have no locking lap bars your restraint check is literally just running around the platform and making sure that all the bars are down and the cedar points one has these little like dog leash type clips that clips onto part of the gondola so it can't come up all the way and you just have to visually scan and make sure those are locked so you can literally just run around the platform close the gate check the gate spiel really quickly um, and start the ride, which is so fun because you can get such good numbers here. Um, I know according to, um, Larson, you can hit 500 riders an hour, which I don't see that as being practical, especially with a Larson one, which we'll get to the disadvantages of a Larson one in a second. Uh, because with the Selner one, and this is on days we had a line and tilt the world slash Lennis's beetle bucks always seem to have a line in camp, which is fun. Uh, whereas other rides never seem to especially on the less busy days but i was pretty happy to get 200 riders an hour with it which i, I was really proud of that <laughs> it was so much fun um so the way these work when you're actually operating them you turn ride power on and then you have another key switch that's actually brakes for the gondolas um so what the brakes do is that keeps the car from spinning um, when, you know, people are getting in or out of the gondola, obviously don't, you don't want that spinning around cause they could be hit by it. Uh, because you've got to remember this whole thing is ridged on a hill on hills throughout the ride. So people can pretty easily trip and fall, especially if there's gondolas swinging around the place. Uh, there's actually a case of an incident on one of these tilt a whirls where someone was injured by the, uh, car swinging as they were getting out. Uh, it actually like ran them over with the wheels, which I can't imagine being very good. Um, so you always turn those brakes on. That was like the only bad bad thing about it, especially with how the cars are designed where they have that overhang. You can't really see the guests. So if there's a guest on the opposite side of the tilt world of the operator and they're getting out before the brakes are on, you wouldn't really see it. Uh, that was really the only unsafe thing. There were mirrors, but it was still really hard to see. Um, but other than that, the ride was perfect. You could move so fast. You have seven gondolas, so you just quickly count off, okay, you're a group, you're a group, you're a group seven times, and go get them in there, run around, do a gate check, spiel. I uh, do a real quick spiel. What? Welcome to Linus's Beetlebugs. For your safety, remain seated in an upright position with your back and shoulders against the seat back and hold on until the ride comes to a complete and final stop. Are you ready? Here we go. And it's gone. It's so much fun. So much fun. One of the most, honestly, it was more fun than some of the coasters. Like, definitely more fun than the Camp Snoopy coasters. More fun on some days than even Mine Ride Gemini. Like, it was such a blast to operate that ride. Um, you, plus, you see people having a blast on it. And I've actually, yeah, as much as I like this ride, 
before I got trained at Camp Snoopy, which was at the end of the season, it was like September or maybe late August um, that I got trained at Camp Snoopy. And before I got trained there, I I knew about tilt a whirls but I had never even seen one. At least I never knew I'd seen one. And I um, had never ridden one. And, yeah, I basically knew nothing about them. So I learned everything I really know about tilt a whirls from operating one, which was interesting. And I've only ridden one once, and it was a test ride. So I don't have a whole lot of experience with them as far as, you know, as a rider. But in operating one, I can say they're easily one of the best flat rides out there. And in my personal opinion, it's one of, if not the best flat ride at Cedar Point. It is such a blast. If you have never ridden one and there's one at your home park, and there probably is because that's one thing I was going to mention, is that there's over, uh, I believe, over 1,000 were made and over 600 are still in operation. Um, so definitely go and ride one. And now we move on to the European counterpart, more or less UK counterpart, to the tilt whirl Then we have the Waltzer. We had a few connection issues with Alex, so I'm going to say his part for us. All right, so the Waltzer uh, is sort of the European counterpart to the tilt a -whirl. Um It has a very different history, though. So some of the physical differences between the tilt a -whirl and a Waltzer is the Waltzers have an actual physical roof over the ride, and they have a, a gangway on where people can wait for the ride, as well as an area where an operator can stand and help rotate the gondolas around while the ride is in motion. Now that was actually banned in the UK uh, in 2007. However, prior to that, that was allowed. And in other countries, uh, it is still allowed. Um, the first waltzer was built in 1933, so a couple years after the first tilt a whirl. Uh, it was a variety of the Noah's Ark ride, which was basically a carousel but with little hills, just just like a tilt a whirl or a waltzer, just no spinning. Um, and so some Noah's Ark rides were actually converted into a waltzer. Um, and most waltzers at the time were built with 10 gondolas. And some had brakes that activated automatically when the restraint was open because these actually have locking restraints. Um, and, they, and they actually lock it specifically with the uh, cars facing outwards so people can board more easily, which is something the tilt a -whirl does not do. Um, the Walters were built by various British companies and they're still being built to this day. And unlike tilt a whirls ride workers go into the ride areas, to, yeah, we mentioned that, where they can push the gondolas. And then moving on to the competition. For the tilt a whirl we have the Larson tilt a whirl which, as we mentioned, when Selner was sold to Larson in 2011, this was created. So these new tilt a whirls have any car design the park requests, uh, though the most popular is by far the Walter-like gondolas that were introduced by Selner in 2003, as we mentioned earlier, without the roof or anything. Um, Larson made some other changes to the, design, to the design, including, sadly, adding locking lap bars. Ah, days of fun are over. Um, which also reduced the number of people per car from four adults to three adults. And that changed the height requirement from 46 inches to ride alone. Uh, and under 46 inches, they can ride with an adult, literally anyone, um, as long as they could sit. And, like, yeah, that was pretty much the rule. It was really <laughs> simple, or walk, I think was the rule. Um, and they changed that from, uh, so now you have to be uh, no shorter than 36 inches. Um, and if you are but below 46, you still have to ride with an adult, but no shorter than 36. So that, of course, greatly decreases the number of people that can ride this type of ride, especially a lot of parks have it, like Cedar Point, have it in the kids area. So the Larson one is definitely, I would say, inferior to the Selner one. It's certainly more health and safety, um, and it's not, not as good anymore, sadly. I mean, it's still fun, I'm sure, but not from an operations side of things. Like having to check those restraints is so pointless. Um, anyway, moving on to some competition about the Waltzer. Uh, we have Mack and Schwarzkopf, very famous companies. They both made some Waltzers in the late 60s and early 70s, uh, but they never really became popular outside of the UK and Ireland, as is the case for pretty much all of the Waltzers. Um, and then KMG, very famous around here, um, made a modern version of the Waltzer, sort of. Uh, it's called the Fun Factory. It was first made in 2002. Unlike the waltzer, it uses arms to move up and down and let the gondola spin. 
Uh, so this ride fits in one trailer, and it is the only KMG ride that needs a crane to be set up. That's right, those XXLs don't, but this little thing does, which is probably the reason that only three of these were built. Um, so now on to some other facts. The oldest operating Tilt-A-Whirl um, is a 1927 model, and it's traveling with Tom Evans in the United, in United Shows, uh, which travels around the U.S. Midwest. I believe they're based out of Kansas City, I think. Um, then we have Faribault, Minnesota, which we mentioned earlier. They were the original Selner uh, manufacturing. They were based out of there originally. Uh, and they're very proud of their Tilt-A-Whirl history, as as soon as Selner closed, they actually restored a bunch of old Tilt-A-Whirl gondolas and uh, place them around town as monuments. And if you go to that town, you can sit in random Tilt-A-Whirl gondolas that are around the town with some cool signs on them. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry, Alex, uh, for the connection issues, but do you have anything else you want to add? No. All right, yeah, this was not really Alex's thing. A lot of these rides are not uh, in Europe at all. It's the uh, You do get waltzers, but they're more or less in the UK. There are a few, I believe, you mentioned traveling in mainland Europe. Yeah, in Germany there is still a Mac version traveling, but it's not coming out that much anymore. And it's, it's just, it never became popular all the time. Yeah, and to my knowledge, the tilt a -whirl seems to, I mean, there were some, when it was in its heyday in the, you know, 50s, 50s, 60s, it did reach Europe, but outside of that, it really is not in Europe anymore, and I don't even believe it's spread to Asia. It's very much a U.S.-type ride. I don't even think it's that popular in South America, so, yeah, unless you're in the U.S. or maybe Canada, you won't really find many tilt a -whirls. But if you are in the U.S. or Canada, go ride one. They're awesome. I thought they would be really sickening, but they're not at all. You just get thrown back into your seat, and it's just out of out of control craziness. It's so fun. So anyway, I think that about wraps up this video. Um, as always, we'll see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.